Hey everyone, first off, I want to say thank you for the recent support. The Josue Vargas video has been doing well, and I have you guys to thank for that. Also, we're at about 150 subs, so big thanks for that. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy. When looking at heavyweight busts, there's a good library to choose from. David Price, Audley Harrison, Malik Scott, and so on. However, there's one heavyweight bust that in my opinion stands out just due to the amount of media hype that he got. That fighter is Michael Grant. Grant started fighting professionally in July of 1994. The reason I say the month is because by the time 1995 came around, he was already 10-0. So for the first three years of his career, dude fought no one. His fights took place in the South where the competition wasn't really as deep. His first relevant name came in 1997 when he took on former contender Jorge Luis Gonzalez. Grant took him out in two minutes, which really started to turn some heads. He then racked up four more wins after that, with the best name being Lou Savaris, so yeah, not too spectacular. In 1999, Grant magically got the opportunity to fight Andrew Galata in an eliminator. I repeat, fought no one, took Lou Savaris the distance, yeah, you get the point. So the Galata fight starts and immediately, chin check alert, down twice in the first. At that point, it seemed like Grant was done, but I have to give credit where credit is due. He got up both times and managed to stay in there. The 10th round of that fight was probably the highest point that Grant's career ever reached. He dropped Galata, and Classic Andrew decides that even though he is up on the cards, he doesn't want to keep going, and Grant wins the Eliminator and a shot at Lennox Lewis. The media hype around the bout was big. Everyone saw Grant as a Herculean-type figure big and strong with a great smile and a lot of punching power. This was a classic case of the one fight syndrome. The one fight syndrome is something that I came up with when making the video. People will see a guy fight one fight and immediately come to the conclusion that he is the best fighter that has ever lived and then are shocked when they find out that he isn't. So the fight starts and it is just so sad to watch. <laughs> which is a place that can paralyze a fighter. Second fight in a row in which Grant has been knocked down in the first round. Second time he'll have to work to survive the last minute of round one. Lewis lands a right hand on the top of the head. Grant trying to fire back. Ropes held him up. Mercanti will count again. Two knockdowns in the round. No three knockdown rule in a heavyweight title fight. shots with this big guy. He has endurance. Lewis throwing to the body as Grant Break. tries to hold him upstairs. Break. Lewis got in another right hand. Grant is wobbling. One punch will finish him. Can he hold on for another 20 seconds? Another uppercut lands for Lewis. That's the punch that did so much damage. Lewis is still got to be the moment, Lewis looks punched out as he lands another uppercut and floors Three, Grant for the fourth time. Four, five, six, seven, This eight, time I don't think so. Nine. That's it, honey. That's it. That's it. Grant got destroyed. Really destroyed. This was worse than just a one-punch knockout. This was so absolutely awful, I can't even put it into words. Three times in the first is really bad. Nonetheless, these things happen. I mean, Amir Khan was obliterated in the first round against Bradis Prescott, but he turned out pretty well. Here's the thing, though. In situations like this, the best thing that a guy can do is impress in their next fight. That's to prove that it was just a fluke moment, or in Grant's case, moments, a promoter would normally put their guy in there with a journeyman or washed up former contender. Instead, they put Grant in there with a prime Jamil McCline who hadn't lost in over five years. Still though, Grant was expected to beat him. However, the first round woes reared their ugly heads. If ever... 
again because of that. That is the seventh time in his last three fights that Michael Grant has tasted canvas. You know, his body is bone dry. Okay. Not one drop of sweat on his shoulders. Okay, here we go. Now, he has shown he can get up in the past, but he is hurt. He is dazed badly. It was a single left hook by McCline, the first punch of the fight that got Grant in trouble. Now, he was in similar trouble early against Galata and managed to weather the storm. But Grant is... Michael Grant, for the third time in a row, had gotten dropped in the first round. But this time, he didn't get up. He said that he had broken his ankle. Just awful. It was then at a point where it wasn't even funny anymore. Just sad. So then what? Grant fired off seven straight wins against nobodies before receiving another relevant fight. He got a shot to take on soon-to-be fellow American heavyweight bust Dominic Gwynn. What did Michael do? Did he show out and prove that he wasn't a bust? No. He got dropped twice and lost again. I wonder if Grant knows that he won the last round. Harold Letterman had him winning the round two. I wonder if Grant has enough confidence in him to even realize that he's won a round. Another left hook by Quinn. And this ought to do it. Oh, oh that was a free shot. That was a free shot and a painful one. Yep, sad lady just saw it so good now. That's it. So then what? Some more fights against some more guys who no one had ever heard of. Then he took on Thomas Adamic. And on that night, all the planets aligned. Big Michael Grant did it. He went the distance and lost. But he wasn't dropped. Mad respect. After that, a couple more wins. Then his stop by Carlos to come in eight. He retires on his stool against Manuel Char in the fifth. And then is knocked out in two against Christoph Zimnok. And then he hung them up. The Michael Grant experience was over. So where did it all go wrong? The answer is not hard to find. Michael Grant was basically what Deontay Wilder was up until the first Stavern fight. A power punching machine who didn't need to box to be successful. Just dynamite in his hands. However, unlike Wilder, he didn't have any form of a gas tank and could not, and I mean could not, take any form of punishment. Every big punch seemed to rattle him. Being a puncher can only get you so far if you can't take a punch and can't box. While it's true that Wilder may not be great technically, he has shown signs of improvement and knows how to set up his shots. Grant just could not do that. He fought like he had a grenade launcher in his hands, but whenever anyone moved out of the way of the grenade launcher, he had no ability to move it and get to his target. It's a shame that he never learned from that, and it's sad that his career ended so rapidly. Anyways guys, thanks for watching as always. This channel is doing so much better than I could have ever hoped, and it's all thanks to everyone who watches and subscribes. You people are the best, and I'm excited to provide more content very soon. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time on Zeke's Box Talk.